Hey guys, this is Shelby with the Roger Public Library. So this week for Make Your Space at Your Place, I want to show you guys how to do a watercolor resist. Uh, so this is a really simple technique that you can use, uh, do with glue and um, acrylic paint and watercolors, right? So the first step is to just find a coloring paper that you like. Um, this is one that I found online at firstpalette.com, right? Um, your coloring page should be kind of I guess simple, right? It should have a lot of thin or thick lines and not a lot of overlap, right? Because that just makes it easier to use the glue, All right? And then you add a little bit of black paint um, to um, Elmer's glue, right? And it's important that the paint isn't water-based because um, we don't want it to mix in with our watercolor, right? Um, so acrylic works really well. You can't use watercolor paint. You can't use temp um, tempera. Um, but I'm going to show you guys, right? And so you just kind of trace along the lines like this, right? And it's really simple. Um, part of the reason why you want kind of thick lines that aren't really close together is because it can be a little hard to control the thickness of the glue that comes out, right? So if it's too thick stuff is going to bleed together um, so, and you lose a lot of the details. Yeah. So yeah, that was super simple. It just took me, you know, like a couple minutes to um, coat this right. Um, you can see at least down here and a little over there that the glue have kind of blended together right because I put too much down. Um, but it shouldn't really affect the overall quality. Now, once you've done this stuff, you need to let it dry, um, probably for about 12 hours at the very least. Um, otherwise, when you put the watercolors down, it's gonna, um, you're gonna make a big mess, right? So this is one that I've done um, previously, right? You can also see here, right, there's some places where I use too much glue and it looks a little funky, um, but it's, it's relatively good. Um, so you'll get a brush and some water, and of course, watercolors. Um, they also make liquid watercolors, right, which work almost exactly the same. Um, if you use watercolors before, you know that um, the paint looks different depending on how much water you mix in, right? So less water um, means that the paint is more vibrant, um, but it, it doesn't cover as much, right? About done, and now I'm gonna get some of this. Um, I guess yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit of this orangish color and try to make some spots on the frog. Do I think it's fun, right? Um, so it's not just a green frog; it has um, other stuff going on too. That also helps us cover up the little black spot that um of glue that got on him before. Okay. Okay, yeah, so there's our frog, right? Um, I mean, you can do the background too, but that, that'll take a while, right? Um, so it's super simple, right? And you can kind of see that um, even though all, all the green is just one color and all the red is just one color, but it, all the spots don't necessarily look the same because there's different amounts of water and pigment um, in different areas, right? So this, this is a fun craft. Another thing, another comment is just paper, right? This is um, cardstock. So it's not ideal for watercolors, but it, it'll work. Um, they do make paper that specifically for watercolors is a little bit better, um, but this works fine. Um, you just need to make sure that it dries flat, right? So you can put stuff on the corners, otherwise it'll kind of buckle a little bit. So um, that's what we have for you guys this week. Um, so you can come pick up craft kits here at the library um, anytime this week. Um, so I hope, hope you have fun, I'll see ya.